So juggling's pretty hard, at least for me it is. But once you get to three balls, there's this natural question, right? It's like, you do four, maybe five. What's the limit? This guy definitely knows. Hi, I'm Alex Barron, and I hold the world record for most balls juggled. That's 11. And I also hold the world record for something called most balls flashed, and that's 14. That's right, Alex has flashed 14 balls. A flash just means throwing a certain number of balls in the air and catching that many balls in sequence one time. Here he is flashing 13 balls. But is 14 balls the limit? Today we're going to look at why juggling 15 balls might be almost impossible. To learn what it takes, I got a lesson from Baron. It's close. Talked with a juggling pro about the patterns and science that make it possible to keep so many balls up in the air, and with someone who doesn't even have to see the balls to juggle. People have been juggling for millennia. This Egyptian painting of women juggling is nearly 4,000 years old. And it's always seemed like a bit of magic. Even three ball juggling is mesmerizing to watch. But performers have always been pushing the limit for higher numbers. Back in the 1920s, famed juggler Enrico Rastelli was said to have juggled 10 balls. And for a while, that seemed like the upper limit for continuous juggling. People could match it, but nobody could really exceed it. That was until 2012, when Baron managed this astounding feat. 11 balls for 23 catches. I bloody did it. 23. On camera, I think. It, feel, it feels good, yeah. Like, I was very happy when I got the world records. I mean, I wouldn't have spent so many hours doing it if I didn't care about it. Baron started juggling as a kid. You know, I was determined to be, like, one of the youngest people to do 11, like, for a flash. You know, first you're like, oh, like, yeah, like, I'll learn five. And, like, you hear people talking on the internet about how, how, how hard five is. And you're like, oh, I'm going like, to be able to do five. And then it just kind of keeps going from there. So I don't think I'll ever have the time, or maybe more likely the patience, to ever become a serious numbers juggler. But I can already do three. So Baron gave me some lessons on how I could do five. So if I want to graduate from three balls to five balls, you're talking about some of the things I need to work on are my actual hand speed yep. and how high I'm throwing the ball because it's the time in between the throws, right? Exactly. Yeah, you'll have to go higher and faster probably. OK, so, sh so show me how that works. <laughs> yeah, how that works. Yeah, how that works. <laughs> Yeah, so with five, I'm going to end up throwing them about eye level or a little bit higher as okay. opposed to lower with three. Um, but otherwise, it's the same. Really, the motion is very similar. You just have to be a little bit more fluid. Um, and yeah, move your hands a bit faster. The hardest bit is the start, because that's when you've got all the weight in your hands. Right. So to begin with, yeah, I just try. Don't even worry about catching them. Just go one, two, three, four, five. And then just like, so here we go. I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, see if I can just get them all up in the air or if I can throw the last ball before the first one comes down. Right? That Perfect. sounds right. Yeah, right. exactly. So, go one, two, three, four, five. Even faster would That's be better. That's pretty good. Yeah, and if it goes really well, what you want to see is two little piles, one for each hand at the oh, end of it. Oh, man. All right. But you can try and catch them. Yeah, too. That's just to get I just speed. want to see if I can get the speed again. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's pretty good. And now try and catch it. <laughs> and I've got five piles. Yeah. <laughs> I managed to pull off a lucky flash when the cameras weren't rolling and I'm still working on doing it continuously. Like, really working on it. Yes. Oh, it's close. These days, five is just a warm-up for Baron. He can do seven without much trouble and makes it look effortless. But when he starts going for big numbers, like nine, 10, 11, all the way up to 14, he usually heads indoors to a squash court. We're outside right now. Yes. It's a little windy. That has something to do with why you practice in squash courts. Yes. Well, wind obviously is going to mess up your pattern a little bit. You want the balls to have a very consistent trajectory every single time you try. Um, and the squash courts have really good contrast, too, because it's basically a white background. So typically, it's much easier to see. Right. And even though you're not looking at one ball in particular, your subconscious is still taking in where they all are in the sky and where they're coming down. So. Keeping an eye on the balls at the top of their arc, or apex, is critical for Baron's big numbers. You look vaguely at the apex of the pattern, and then from that you have some sense of what the pattern looks like, whether it's slanted, off kilter. It's not like me registering each throw and going, oh, that was a good one, that was a bad one. I guess I do think that was a bad one. If I do a bad throw, I typically notice that ball in particular. But that's not the only way to juggle a lot of balls. 
My name is Zach McAllister. Uh, I hold three different records for BBB, which stands for Blind Behind the Back Juggling. I hold the record for doing it five, six, and seven. McAllister doesn't have to look at the balls at all. He feels for their apex. I'll start with them behind the back and I'll make my first throw. And once the throw is made, then I wait to feel it hit my elbow. And once I feel that, then I know it's ready for the next ball. Usually in my head, I'll feel out, be like, okay, at this point, when I feel this, I need to make this next throw. Once I feel it coming down to my wrists, then I know that uh, I need to open up my hand and have it ready so that way it can make the catch. It is crazy impressive, but McAllister thinks he's at the number's limit for blind behind the back. As you increase each ball, you start to realize I'm running out of space on my back, and uh, four balls isn't too bad, but once you hit five balls, then you're starting to realize, like, I need to either, like, start making my throws a little higher than my elbow, which is not ideal, because then it's even more blind, and I have to think about it even more which takes up to like seven, so you just have to hope that they all work out. Traditional numbers jugglers don't have that kind of limit. In fact, the sky is literally their limit. But it seems like there are physical barriers to getting more balls in the air. Let's talk about 15 for a second, for example, just for the, for the flash. I do think there's a physiological barrier there where someone will have to train very, very specifically for flashing that number. Doing 15 is going to require a level of strength which is considerably beyond what I have at the moment. To learn more, I talked with Jack Calvin. He's a professional juggler and former engineer, and he's writing a book on human performance and juggling. Calvin has been measuring juggling hand speed with an accelerometer and a smartphone app. So naturally, we asked Alex Barron to try it out. I juggle three balls in a comfortable cascade pattern. First, Calvin had him juggle progressively higher numbers of balls. Do you want to try a run of nine? And then he had him try an absurdly fast yeah, air juggle. So Perhaps, <laughs> not surprisingly, <laughs> Baron topped eight, Calvin's nine, charts. Balls. According to his maximum hand speed, when he shook his hand as fast as he could, it was equivalent to juggling 23 wow. to 25 balls. <laughs> so he's actually nowhere near his limit according to his hand speed. That's crazy. But according to Calvin, speed is not the only limit when it comes to numbers juggling. Basically what I found is that hand speed is not the main limiting factor of, of juggling, it's actually the accuracy. There's a few different degrees of accuracy, but the, the first degree would be able to throw something up so that it lands within reach. The other is, uh, is the space that you have in the air and having to avoid collisions between objects. Of course, I wanted to find out how I stack up, so I strapped on the accelerometer. There you go. We have three ball data here. Okay. You want to do two in one hand? Yeah. So there's a couple ways to do this, right? You can do it in columns. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can put the balls down and shake your hand as fast as you can. Faster! Come on, faster! You can go faster than that! Is that all you got? That's all I got. Come on! <laughs> okay, that's good. And according to Calvin's calculations, right. your maximum amount was 14.1 balls. Sweet. So, so if I practice really diligently, I could maybe flash the 14. There. You could. You have the hand speed to flash 14 balls, just like Alex. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you probably An don't have the accuracy. <laughs> So I'm still working on five, but it's nice to know that I have the hand speed to do more than that if I keep practicing. In fact, according to Jack's research, most people probably have the hand speed to do as many as nine. I'm actually a professional. Nope. <laughs> so hand speed is definitely a factor to consider here, but here's another big one. How do you even hold this many balls? Jugglers call it the grip. So yeah, in terms of the grip, uh, we start off just with a very simple one in each hand. We move to two, you end up with a little line. This one further out goes first. Three is a little triangle. I like to release this one first. Four, so some people stack it on top, which maybe you do for lower numbers, but we're gonna go high, so we can't do that quite yet. You end up this little diamond. Five, I like this kind of trapezium shape. Six in one hand, suddenly you get this pretty ugly two lines of three deal. 
Uh, this one, as you can see, is pretty compressed. This is probably the worst one to release. Uh, if you get up to 14, then you just shove the last two on top. Really, any time you can shove the last two on top, um, but with 14, we're forced to go like this. I do these little setup throws to try and get them in the right position. Baron is a pretty tall guy. He's over six feet tall and he's got big hands. But what about the rest of us? Okay, so not all of us are up for massive numbers juggling. 14. But there are other ways to impress, mathematically, of course. There's the beauty of something called sight swap. So sight swap is a way of notating juggling patterns. So you can throw balls at different heights when you juggle. And the way jugglers typically denote those different heights is they do it based on how high you'd have to throw to juggle a certain number of balls. So for three balls, I can do it like really low like this, right? If I pick up five balls, <clears throat> just because there are more balls, I've got to throw it higher to do the same thing. So what side swaps lets you do is combine throws from different numbers of balls, and you just call those throws the number of balls. So a simple one, for example, with four balls would be something called five, three, four. And so if I was just doing four, right, they all go the same height. So this is lots of fours over and over again. What I can do is I can throw one ball higher to be a five and then one ball lower to be a three and then go back to four. So that's like five, three, four. You can see there's a five ball throw and a three ball throw. And then you can either do five, three continuously or you can mix it up. And yeah, what's fun about that is now if you want to tell your friend, hey, I found this great new juggling pattern, you just give them a list of numbers and then they can do it or they can try and learn it at least. Sightswap can even be a way to practice juggling greater numbers, according to Calvin. Sightswap is a way that you can, that, that some people practice higher numbers using a lower number of balls. Uh, in this pattern, you're actually throwing, one hand is doing the work of five balls. One hand is, is, is doing exactly, is doing half of a five ball pattern. And the other hand is doing a one ball pattern, which is... Just that. That's useful because practicing big numbers can be a serious workout. The raw physical act of it, like the speed at which you have to move your hands, the amount of weight that you have in your hands at the beginning is on a different level. People tend to see in the juggling world going from an even number to an odd number as being substantially harder than going from an odd number to an even number. With even numbers, you can throw them in pairs, which means you can get your whole body involved. Uh, with 15, you'd have to do it asynchronously. The biggest question mark for me is probably whether someone has the physical ability to practice 15 enough to be able to do it or have enough attempts to be lucky enough to catch 15 balls, because of course there's like luck involved. Between the practice needed to perfect technique and the strength and speed required to keep the balls in the air, Baron thinks his record will stand. But he's eager to see it challenged. Yeah, like do I think someone will ever do 15 for a flash? I like to think someone will do 15. I mean, I, I, you know, you compare this to like the 100 meter sprint or a marathon or something where countless people have optimized themselves as hard as they can and trained for it. I think there's, there's more to go in, in juggling for sure. I don't know what if that's within my personal limit, but I, I'll intend to find out over the next 10 years or so. Beyond that, I mean, yes, I think there is a physical limit at some point, right? And for me, it's hard to conceive of juggling 16 or 17, or flashing 16 or 17 balls. Maybe I should say that 15 is impossible, and then some guy will come along and be like, or some girl, and be like, no, like, <laughs> screw you, like, I'm gonna do it. So I've been practicing a few minutes every day and every once in a while I will get lucky and flash five. And I finally managed to do it on camera. <laughs> yeah! Oh, so there's hope. <laughs> but it's not like I'm ever gonna challenge somebody like Baron. And that's totally fine. Because what he's doing is already almost impossible.